kind invitation. I am nothing but humble to be here among such a distinguished guests. Thank you. I was asked to talk about a different subject, which is the nexus of the Buddhist circuit here in South Asia and development. And I would like to start with a quote by the historical Buddha from his very last moments on this earth in Kushnagar. And I quote, there are four places the sight of which we were rosy strong emotions in toes with fate. Here the Tathagata was born, here the Tathagata attained enlightenment, here the Tathagata set in motion the wheel of the Dharma, and here the Tathagata attained final Nirvana. And the monk, the nun, the lay man and lay woman who has faith should visit these places. There are about 500 million Buddhists in the world and about 200 non-Buddhists which are sympathizers. Many of them are here, many of us are here, who aspire to visit each and all of these places where he has not only shared, uh, attained his enlightenment and shared his teachings, but where also he left behind his footprint. It's a sacred land. However, the paradox we see from people like me who work on development and the communities, for them, this is not a sacred land. This is a land of struggle. This is a land of survival. Some of the most, the poorest communities in the country, in India, and in this world, they live around these very sacred monuments which have been built to his honor and they benefit very little. And many of them, they resent, actually, this reality. And the most interesting thing we have seen, and I, I have wandered in this land for quite some time, the Buddha himself, he spent 45 years wandering, walking, kilometers, thousands of kilometers, trying to meet as many people as he could, not only to hear his teachings, but as His Holiness has said, to share love, hope, to give them some notion of how can they overcome their suffering. And the reality today, when we go to these places, this is not happening. And I keep asking myself, where is the Sangha? What is happening that we go, we do our praise, we do our synchromabulations, and then we go back to our hostel, to our hotels, to our monasteries. We fence ourselves from the communities, and there are two realities happening there. So I did a, one analysis, I know it's a different subject, looking at, for instance, all the wealth, the funds that are brought to these places, to Sarna, to Kushnagar, to Bodh Gaya, to Sravasti and others. And we came out with a number that less than 3% of everything that we all here bring to these places actually go to the community. Everything stays with the airlines, with the transportation, with whoever serves us, the meals and accommodators, being hotels, restaurants, monasteries. The communities themselves, they are completely out. I have to say that the government of India and many states in Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh and others, they are trying. I have seen with my own eyes, I have been working with them, they are my main partners, and I see that they have been trying. But the task is too big. They can't do this alone. Even us, I am a drop in the ocean. We need to come together and help. This task, nobody in the world can do alone, and we shouldn't be doing it alone. That's not the message. That's not why we are here together. We should help. So from the side of the World Bank of the United Nations, we are trying. We have about, for three years now, we have been working with the Ministry of Tourism and some of the state governments trying to help them. And what we are doing are basically four things which I would like to share with you. One of them is helping the government 
to prepare public investments, to be able to provide the water, the sanitation, that all of you also benefit when you visit these destinations, these sacred places, but in a different way, in a way that rescues the sacred, the sanctity of these places. And let me give you an example. When you look at Sarnath, for instance, when Buddha arrived there crossing the Ganga, he found a forest with plenty of deers, very fresh air, water bodies. In the last 10 years, in 10 years, 60% of the environmental cover of Sarna, meaning its trees, its water bodies, have disappeared in 10 years. What has been there for 2,500 years has disappeared in 10 because of the way that the services are being provided. The government is very aware of that, and they are trying to do this different. And we are trying to help, but we need also your help for that. Another, the other thing we are doing is to help the local businesses, the street vendors, the rickshaws, people who live there in these places. And they could be the custodians protecting these areas, but as of today, again, they are just struggling. So we are doing, we have, I'm doing a mapping of all the communities, all the businesses, all the opportunity. The, woman, the men selling some flowers, the selling the chai, the women selling vegetables. We are looking at them and how best to link them to your needs. How can they best serve you? And we can create here a community. And one very, very important thing here, when we talk about love, when His Holiness talk about love, the more we help the woman in these places, the better we build this society. Because the two priorities of every single woman I have met for the last five years, in every single village I have been in all these places, is to ensure that the kids get the right nutrition and to ensure that the girls go to school. This is very noble. I'm sure that he would be very proud of it. The third one is to bring more. The task, again, is too big. You know that. He wanted to, you know, it's too big, his legacy. There are too many people we have to help. We need to bring others. We are trying to bring the private sector, but not with a vision of business, with a vision of enlightenment, to make sure that they can help to bring the necessary service that are required. We are helping also with a common identity that can bring all of us together, as His Holiness said, independent of our countries, of our languages, of our nationalities, of our traditions. We are here to share compassion and help others. So this is all I should say, that all this work has benefit from many of you. We have been very humbly, we know that we have a limited knowledge, so we have been consulting many scholars, many monastics, and we are very thankful to all the wisdom that has been shared with us. And I stop here to say that I'm very pleased to share anything we are doing to make it better with your vision. And I just ask, please, let's come together as a Sangha and help these communities. Thank you. <laughs>